Well, Vladimir Putin defending admitted Russian agent Maria Butina. Today, as Putin spoke out, a federal judge gave Butina 18 months on conspiracy charges yesterday in U.S. federal court. After she serves her sentence, Butina heads back to Russia. It is an outrage. It is so. It is unclear what she was sentenced for, what crime she committed. They took, caught, locked the girl up, but have nothing to charge, nothing to charge. But so, it wouldn't seem totally ridiculous. They sentenced her to 18 months. Well, speaking to the judge before her sentence, Butina expressed remorse, admitting, quote, instead of building peace, I created discord. She's going to be deported after she serves her sentence. With that, we bring in her attorney, Robert Driscoll. Appreciate you being with us. Uh, according to the president of Russia, at least, they have nothing to charge. If there was nothing to charge, why'd she plead guilty? Uh, well, she pled guilty to uh, acting as a foreign agent. I think uh, not to defend Vladimir Putin, but I, I, I don't envy where the president's at when he has to speak to President Putin about this because it's very difficult to explain what she did wrong. Um, I think even the people at the Department well, of Justice had a hard time to judge. Well, if she didn't do anything wrong, why, she, why is your lawyer, did you ever plead guilty? Well, because the, the, the statute that we have, and as interpreted by the DOJ, says acting as an agent for a foreign government uh, without registering uh, means you violated the law and are subject to a 10-year uh, felony. Um, but what y exactly you have to do is kind of unclear, and it's been unclear in this whole case. Well, so you have you, to do you, the sentencing. You, you see, you, you saw her be sentenced yesterday. Obviously, yep. you didn't want 18 months. You want time served and right. put on a plane uh, yesterday. There was yep. some talk of that possibly happening. Do you wish you'd gone to trial on this and seen if you could get a jury to believe your arguments? Uh, I'm glad we didn't because of the risk, and I think that you know you have an independent, um, uh, life-tenured federal judge who who bought what DOJ was selling on this, and so I'm not sure I would have done that much better with a jury. You know what I thought was interesting was is that in the entire 400-page Mueller report, Butina's name doesn't come up at all. These right. are completely separate mm -hmm. investigations. It's important to point that out. Yet yesterday it came up at sentencing. Why? That, that um, frankly infuriated me because uh, Mueller's team did interview Maria. And chose not to include and, her in and the report. My understanding at all. is that Maria or Ms. Bettina yeah. uh, cooperated extensively with the U.S. government. Is that correct? Totally. 50 hours of interviews um, with uh, the FBI, with the U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, with the Mueller team for, for, I think it was only an hour or two with them. But, um, and she had nothing, the Mueller team never wanted anything to do with her. She had nothing to do with election interference. And to have the judge raise that at sentencing um, was a bit frustrating. It almost been as though the judge had been reading. The news accounts, rather than what was in the pleadings, it was strange. So, so does this feel like a red scare to you situation? I, I find it hard to believe anyone of any other nationality would have been treated like this. Hmm. I hate to say that, um, but I, I just can't, uh, I just cannot imagine um, someone with charges this non-specific. Um, th there's, there's not one classified document, Leland, in this entire case. Hmm. Five, five terabytes a, of data, a, none, none classified. And th there's a lot of Twitter conversations, yeah. though. Um, all right, well, you have been a fierce advocate uh, for her over the past nine months. I know right. you'll be looking after her over the next mm -hmm. uh, nine as well. Another person that you're becoming a fierce advocate <laughs> for is Carl Klein uh, right. of the White House, who has been subpoenaed to testify on Capitol Hill about right. the security clearances and on whether or not Jared Kushner was given preferential treatment or presidential treatment, if you will, in getting his security clearance. Uh, important question. He's going to go testify this week before Congress. Uh, what's he going to say? Um, well, he'll, he'll answer whatever questions Congress has, unless he's instructed not to answer by White House counsel um, or by me. So I think what he'll be talking about is the process by which people get clearances, any changes he made in the process, or anything like that. I think he's not, my understanding, of the White House's position. And I, frankly, concur with it as a matter of policy. I do not think they're going to allow him to testify about anyone's individual SF-86 file, um, because... I mean, so, so, so what you're saying is he's not going to talk about the pertinent issues, which is did the president or somebody else put their hand on the scale on Kushner's security clearance? He's well, not think, going to answer that question. I, I think it depends on how questions are, are asked. I, I think at the end of the day, the merits of this are not going to be a you, big you, deal. You, you've talked to him. Uh, has he ever indicated to you that the president or anybody else put their hand on the scale? I think when this is over, there's going to be no evidence of that. No evidence of that. Interesting. On the record with that. Uh, conceivably, if somebody hasn't done anything wrong, why do they need the White House counsel, their own personal lawyer, et cetera, et cetera, before they agree to testify on Capitol Hill? Uh, Carl's caught in between. I mean, this is like, to, 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 it's maybe inappropriate, but use a mob analogy, like if this is the Sopranos. <laughs> um, my guy's a civilian. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. I mean, Elijah Cummings is, 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 is a made man for the Democrats. The White House Council are a bunch of made guys for the Republicans, and they're shooting it out over, you know, how far can we go on executive privilege versus congressional authority. My guy's just a civilian, and so he needs his own. Um, are you are you lawyer. worried though that he's going to be conceivably caught in the middle and no, I, held I'm, in contempt by Congress? Or I'm protecting or him all, all the way along. Um, you know, making sure when the when the White House instructed him not to go. I made sure that uh, that I knew what DOJ's position was on the constitutionality of the subpoena. You know, I got to make sure my guy isn't the one that goes to jail at the end of this. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. so even though he's not the focus of it, and even like I, I said, mean, you, I, say, you say make sure. It seems as though that you're worried about the possibility. We only got five no, seconds. No, I think any kind of time there could be contempt would be worried. But I'm not worried about the substance of this at all. Okay. And I just got to make sure the procedure works so that he's safe. Bob, always appreciate you coming in. Good to see you. Good we'll to be see, here. We'll watch Wednesday. Take all care. Right.